Oh. <sighs> That's four all day right there. Bassmaster Elite Series champion, Jamie Hartman, here to give you a little bit of a tip on some smallmouth fishing. Um, one of the underrated, uh, not so widely used technique. Um, it is gaining popularity. It's been around for a while, it has. And uh, it's just people don't put it into their arsenal as much as I do. And that's the Carolina rig. Uh, the Carolina rig has been a, a milestone for me for quite a few years. It's a simple technique. It has its time, it has its place, and it has its purpose. Um, you know, there's a lot of different scenarios that make you want to use it, and then there's definitely ones you don't want to use it in. That's so that'll be more of a, a different right video when I get into more of the specifics on it. But basically, you know, I take either a lead weight, um, one ounce, three quarter ounce, or a, a brass weight. I prefer brass when I'm fishing smallmouth. Yeah, uh, there's just something about that brass, the way it ticks, and the way it looks. It just attracts them bass, and then I'll throw in either a red or a black bead, and that's basically it. And you take your, uh, I use a number seven, or I'm sorry, yeah, a number seven swivel, and that's basically your setup besides the hook. We'll throw a hook in there. The owner rigging hook is probably one of the best hooks i found for rigging for smallmouth. So... And that's basically it. Your leader varies um, on whether you're fishing grass or you're fishing rock. And you just make your adjustments from there. And, and a lot of times, them fish will tell you if they want a, a two foot, a one and a half foot leader, or they want a four foot and even a five foot leader. When you get in that real thick grass, you want to go longer with it. So, I mean, here's a, here's a basic setup of mine right here. And that's, you know, that's pushing three foot right there. Yeah, maybe a little better, just over three foot. And uh, that's it right there. One ounce bead to a swivel. And a lot of times when I'm in a tournament situation, I'll take one of these uh, bobber stops right here and I will slide a bobber stop right on the top of this knot. And that protects the knot from the bead and the weight crashing on it. And you won't break off nearly as much. When I'm practicing, I don't mind throwing it without it. But when I'm in a tournament situation, I'll put one of these on almost every single time. All right, so there's the setup. Now the rod setup and line setup and reel. Basic uh, for me, I run a 7.6 medium heavy uh, cash and rods. It's actually a flipping stick is what it is. Um, I like it, it's got a lot of backbone to it, yet with a, a decent amount of tip, but your casts are so far and that weight is so heavy, when you reel down, you've gotta have backbone. It's just a big sweeping hook set. And that's the key, big sweeping hook set. So I run that. When you run a, a big sweeping hook set, I can go 15 and I can go 12 pound high seas fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. That's what I prefer to use most of the time. I will go as high as 20 if we have stain in the water. If there's no stain, I'm gonna keep it down a little bit. Um, but with that sweeping hook set, you don't break very many fish off unless you've got yourself a fray. And I run that on a high speed Shimano reel. Um, this is a cron arc. It's a, a seven two to one. Um, you can go as high as the eights, the 8.1 to one, 8.2 to one, whatever they come in. The high speed reel is great for picking up all that slack and reeling down and getting into that fish as hard as you can. Get as much tension on that fish and he's on his way to the boat. It's just a fish catching machine for me. I've used it north, south, east, west, it doesn't matter. Uh, the smallmouth just absolutely love it when they're on it. I'm not telling you it's an everyday situation. Uh, the harder the wind blows, that's when you want to throw it. So go out, give it a try, and good luck to you.